Hello, happy people, and welcome to your Moment of Zed, the YouTube channel dedicated to the most beautiful car in the world, pew, pew, the BMW Z3, or as the folks in Bushmills call it, the Z3. I'm Mark, and today we're going to do a fairly simple maintenance item, uh, change the differential oil on the Z3, something I should have probably done when I first bought the car. Didn't do it for whatever reason, had other stuff going on, but now we're going to get to it. But before we do, we have three Zeds of the Week. First up, we have Hal from New Brunswick, Canada with his 1998 1 1.9 liter in Boston Green Metallic. It has less than 80,000 miles. He's the second owner. He imported this car from Texas to Canada way back in 2004. Recent work he's done is he's replaced all the fuses and relays. He's installed a new fuel pump. Last fall, he put on all new tires, replaced all the fluids and all the filters. Next, he'd like to do his top brand new and new stereo and speakers. Very nice. Next up, Lewis from Miami, Florida with his 2001 three liter five speed with over 180,000 miles. Now he's just had it for a few months. He's already replaced the DISA valve, cleaned the IAC valve, and all the injector basket filters. Now the car has Coney shocks all around, nice Sumitomo tires, and he is looking for BBS wheels to complete the look. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for sharing your beautiful cars. As always, if you'd like to see your car on Zed of the Week, please follow the very simple instructions in the description below. Now on with that differential. Okay, so before we actually get under the car and do this actually rather easy maintenance item, uh, I'd like to go through the controversial parts of this, and you say, well, what could be controversial about this? The controversy is that BMW says the oil in the differential is lifetime. The question is, what does BMW mean by lifetime? I've done uh, way too much research in the old forums and other parts of the internet, gone down the rabbit hole, and depends on who you ask. Some people feel that lifetime meant 100,000 miles when BMW published that. Other people thinks it, think it means 50,000 miles. Other people change their differential oil at 10,000 miles every 10,000, which seems excessive to me. You know, to me, I think you split the difference every 25K or 50K miles should probably be sufficient. Uh, probably meets the letter of what lifetime means, I suppose. The other controversy is, of course, what kind of differential you have. Now, people say, no problem, just jack the car up so the rear wheels are free. Spin one rear wheel one way, and if the other rear wheel spins the same way, you have a limited slip differential. If it spins the opposite way, you have an open differential. That may be, or you maybe have a limited slip differential where the clutches are so worn that it's acting like an open diff. I've also had people say that, hey, if you have a torsion differential, spinning that doesn't work. You're not producing enough torque to make it go limited slip. So everything's going to look like an open potentially. Here's what I found out. If you have a 1996 through 1998 car like I do, you have an open differential unless you have option S209A. And you can find that out if you don't have the original window sticker uh, by going on one of the VIN decoders available online. They're free. I've linked a couple in the uh, description of the video. And if you look that up using your VIN, you'll know if you have that option or not. And I looked mine up and I don't have that option. So as far as I know, I have an open differential. Now, if you have a 1999 through 2002 car, non-M, you should have a torsion or torque sensing differential. And the reason any of this is important is it's going to change the uh, viscosity of the oil you need to use. And if you have any M car at all from any year, you should have a traditional limited slip differential which, with a clutch pack. And again, that's going to mean you need a different oil. So this is what I discovered. If you have an open differential, you should be using a 75W90 oil. If you have a torsion differential, you should be using 75W110 with a limited slip additive. And if you have a clutch pack type differential, if you have an M car, you should be using a 
75W140 oil with limited slip differential additive. So there you have it. If you disagree with any of that, please put that in the comments. I'd love to hear from you because there's a lot of stuff out there and I tried to weed through the noise as best I could. Okay, so let's look at the materials we're using. I went with the Valvoline in the grade I just discussed. Uh, now everyone has their favorite oil, Mobile One, Amsol, Royal Purple, Redline, whatever. Uh, Valvoline's a brand name. It's fairly inexpensive. This was available on Amazon. This I picked up at AutoZone. This was $12 or $13. This was $18, I think. And I bought it in two formats just to show you both and see which one's easier. I bought the squeeze bag Valvoline, which is a little bit more expensive, but you should be able to squeeze it right in, as we'll see. And then I bought the standard tall quart bottle of the same stuff. Uh, now for this, you're really gonna need a pump. So I bought a pump. Uh, this is a slippery peat fluid pump. And I bought this because I'm probably gonna end up needing it to do the transmission anyways. So I'm gonna use this and this and we'll see which one's easier. Uh, I also needed a 14 millimeter male hex socket, half inch drive. And I bought it in the impact wrench style strength uh, just in case i needed to use it on the impact wrench or if i ever do and then finally i bought brand new aluminum crush washers and we'll talk about that in a minute now this this and this are available on amazon and i put those links in the description this again i bought at AutoZone, and these i bought at a come from a company in ohio called ecs tuning and i will put that link in the description as well all right so let's go ahead and get under the car and the first thing i would tell you is that pretty much everyone who does a video about this on the internet says you have to lift the car you have to put the car up on jack stands or on lift or whatever uh, to have room to work but what I'm finding is, is that I probably could do it without it. Now to film, it makes it a little bit more difficult, but the reality of it is, is that I can get the tools. This is my half inch ratchet along with that uh, hex I showed you earlier. I can get the tools in here uh, and I can maneuver them around. The only thing is, is that how tight are these uh, plugs? This is the fill plug, this is the drain plug. And if those are real tight, I can really only use one arm under here. But what I found yesterday was I got this fill open with just uh, putting an extension on the ratchet handle. And then this uh, drain one was a little bit tougher, but I, I used a little different technique. I'm going to show that right now. My point being, I think you could do this without lifting the car. Uh, I, I think it's something that's possible. I'm going to lift it anyways, but check this out first. So like I said, I was under here yesterday and I'm thinking I can do this without lifting the car if I didn't have to film, but that drain plug was really tough to get and I couldn't really get myself under there uh, with the car on the ground, but I came up with this as a way to break that drain plug loose and it's just my, uh, just my low profile jack up against the ratchet and that broke it loose and there it's broken loose it's loose enough to go by hand now so again using that technique that just kind of occurred to me i don't know if you've ever seen it before uh i think i could do this on the ground with and the car's level you need the car level to do this okay i've got the car up in the air so the uh, rear wheels are off the ground tires aren't touching and as i spin the passenger side backwards, the driver's side moves forward. Again, this is telling me I have an open diff or I have a worn out clutch pack diff or maybe I have a torsion diff. So does it tell me much? Eh, probably not. So up underneath the car, I have the car and four jack stands all at their lowest setting. I've got the drain pan underneath the differential and now I get to work on the, the plugs. Always start with your fill plug first because if you take the drain plug out first and then you find that this is completely frozen, 
you're not going to be able to refill your diff to take it anywhere to get help. Uh, you're kind of stuck. So always make sure that this fill plug uh, is loose and ready to go. And again, I loosened it up a little bit beforehand, so it's pretty easy. And I'm going to go ahead and just unscrew that. And whoever filled it before filled it really well because that's a lot of extra oil considering it should only be level with the bottom of that. Uh, now, it sure looks like good oil, too. Uh, looks like really good oil. So you might get some oil out of there. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the drain plug. And again, I loosened that up a little bit ahead of time. And there we go. Also, by the way, I took the car out for a few miles, warmed it up. So this would be nice and loose. And there goes the rest of it from the drain plug, and we're just going to let it sit here and drain for a little while. So while I'm waiting for the last few drops to drain out of that differential, it'll be a good time to talk about these crush gaskets. Uh, both plugs have a 22 millimeter inside by 27 millimeter outside diameter uh, aluminum crush washer or crush gasket, and many people say that you can reuse it once. Well, if you bought your car with 100,000 miles like I did, how many? How would you know how many times they've been reused? Hard to say. Uh, for 99 cents, you can buy uh, a new one for each. Obviously, I bought two. Uh, there's the part number you can see on your screen. I also put the link in the description to uh, ECS Tuning is the name of the folks that sold these to me. Again, 99 cents a piece. Why not just do it and replace it with new? I'll save the old ones in case the new ones leak for some reason. But again, I'm going to go ahead and replace these. But many people say you don't have to. Okay, next step. I've got my drain plug with my new crush washer on it. And we're just going to go ahead and wipe its chin and put that on there obviously you have to put the drain plug in first if we're going to fill it up and i'm going to get that snug we'll talk about torque which is another controversial topic about this job we'll talk about torque in a minute but for right now i'm just going to give that a good and snug now of course the crush washer has that name because you want it to be crushed but I'm not going to crush it quite yet. This will probably hold. I could probably leave this like this forever. But we will torque it, and we'll talk about those torque specifications in a minute. Okay, so time to fill. I'm going to start with the bagged Valvoline. I've gone ahead and cut the tip off this, and we're going to see how convenient this is to do. I still have the drain pan under here just in case I make a mess. And let's just go ahead, put that in the fill port, and start squeezing it in. Now supposedly this differential is going to take this quart plus part of the other one. Uh, this is actually pretty easy to do. And the reality of it is I'm not even worried about getting all of it out because I can always dump any excess in this bag into uh, the other quart since I won't use that whole thing and just save that for the next time. Uh, but of course, like anything like this, like squeezing a tube of toothpaste, squeeze from the bottom and you'll get the rest of that in there. So pretty easy. Is it worth the extra, it's 50% more to get it in this format? Uh, hmm, I don't know. That's up to you. So funny thing happened to me on the way to finishing off this bag of gear oil. Uh, a quart was too much for it the way I currently have it. I know the car is level, but as you can see, my new oil's draining out, uh, which is kind of a waste. So I think I understand how they've got more than uh, more than their fair share in last time. I have a feeling that they went ahead and, and made the car unlevel and, of course, then topped it off. So just to be safe, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to lower the front of the car, and I'm going to get as much oil in here as I can uh, didn't seem to hurt it before, and, and I, I worry that a quart is going to be not enough. So I'm going to go in and try and get some uh, some of the pump cord in by, by lowering the front and making this, I guess, not quite level. I'm going to cheat. Again, if you disagree, please tell me about it in the comments. Okay, so I've made the car uneven and uh, just a little bit. 
I do want to top it off. I mean, technically, if it's up to the fill line when the car's level, it's up to the bottom of the fill plug, that should be enough. But I wanted to go ahead and try this uh, new pump that I'm sure I'm going to use on the manual transmission as well. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, try this just to top it off now that we're uh, high in the back and a little lower in front. And the slip repeat pump has this handy third hand, I guess they called it, which basically is just a thing that goes into the fill hole, locks in there. So you can, you don't have to hold that. And then it's just a matter of going ahead and pumping like you would uh, any other pump like this. And I'm just gonna fill this until it starts leaking out again. And now I'm leaking and I'm going to say I might have gotten uh, one and a half quarts in there, give or take. Um, maybe uh, one and a third quarts, just kind of estimating. So then I've got my fill plug. I put my new crush washer on there. And then I'm going to clean this up and we'll talk about torque settings. So before I talk about the torque settings on those plugs, uh, the final uh, tally of oil I used. Now that bag that I used, which I didn't quite get all of it in, uh, then I poured the excess into here, into the bottle, and I used a little bit of the bottle. So I'm about one quart, three ounces, give or take. One quart, two ounces, that's about it. A quart and two ounces minus a little bit spilled into the into the pan from from overflowing so i'm thinking a, a quart and an ounce a quart and two ounces that's about it and by the way uh i liked uh using the slip repeat pump in this bottle more than the bag just kind of felt it was easier had more control over it so that's my verdict on that so let's wrap up this with the final controversy is how much to torque the plugs now Supposedly BMW specs are 52 foot-pounds. With that said, many people say just snug it up well with a 6-inch ratchet. Other people say less because you could crack the case. Now, this is an aluminum case, so that's a possibility. Uh, 45 was a number I was told that seemed to, you know, with all my research, and seemed to be better. A 52 seems off like an awful lot. And you'll see when, it, when I put the torque to it now that it, it's quite a bit. It should not leak, and that aluminum crush washer is going gonna to flatten a little bit when you do it even to 45. So here we go. And there we go at about 45. That's the drain, and I'm going to do the same thing with the fill. And before I forget, even though I did forget... Take it out and run it a few miles and then bring it back and crawl up underneath and make sure nothing leaked out. And that's your final test. You should be good to go for another lifetime. So, folks, there you have it. Very simple maintenance item. Should take you maybe an hour and something you should do if you haven't done it already. Don't be like some people I know. If you found this content valuable, please crush that like button as always. And until next time, remember... Friends don't let friends drive boring.